From a centuries-old clubhouse turned waterfront playhouse, to natural beauty in national parks, to a small town with a big boating history, this week we're on the St. Lawrence River, cruising the Thousand Islands on a 2001 Sea Ray 380 Sundancer. Our plan is to head from Kingston through the Bateau Channel and Admiralty Islands to Gananoque, then onwards through the Navy Islands and under the Thousand Island Bridge to Rockport. We set out from Confederation Basin in Kingston bright and early with clear skies and perfect weather. As we clear the mouth of the Cataraqui River, our first landmark is the Royal Military College and, across Navy Bay, its neighbour, Fort Henry. With my wife at the helm and father-in-law navigating, I'm free to nerd it up, as I am wont to do, pointing out Kingston's telltale Martello Towers. The round fortresses were built in the 1840s because of something happening on the other side of the country. The Oregon border dispute threatened to plunge the British colonies and United States over the edge, so along with the upgraded Fort Henry, Shoal Tower was built in what's now Confederation Basin, Fort Frederick stands watch over RMC, while Cathcart stands on Cedar Island. But with our first history lesson over, we leave Dead Man Bay and appropriately spot some modern pirates. Clearly though, the priorities of these tall ships have improved over the years. We take the wider route between the peninsula and Whiskey Island, although as this sailboat proves, passage between Whiskey and Cedar Islands is possible. Cedar Island has campsites, picnic sites, and paid mooring at a small floating dock. The official name was changed from St. Lawrence Islands National Park. Some of the signage still bears the old name, but make no mistake, this is the start of the Thousand Islands. Things open up a bit, so we open up the throttle and get the boat on plane. Taking off seemed to catch on, at least with a few flocks of cormorants. Some of the most scenic routes through the Thousand Islands are some of the most challenging to boat through, but that's what makes them so rewarding. What helps out a lot is if you have a navigator. Luckily, I have my father-in-law who's been boating his whole life, who's working as first mate, the first and only time he will ever be in the subservient role on the helm. And though there's plenty to see, if you're at the helm, pay attention. Spectacle Shoal is well marked, but there are a lot of tiny islands, shoals, and other potential dangers you want to avoid. As we near the Bateau Channel, I keep my eyes peeled for the cable ferry. It looks small and easy to avoid, but this is a unique obstacle connecting the mainland to Howe Island. There's no propeller. Instead, two heavy cables strung across the channel are used. The current ferry can hold 15 cars and is owned by the province, but there's been a cable ferry of some size and various ownership at this very spot since at least 1898. The Bateau Channel is a popular route for boaters, and it's a little more protected than the Middle Channel, offering great scenery from reedy marshlands and shallow bays to rocky outcrops and islands, and of course, where there's scenery, there are often very nice homes. Leaving the Bateau Channel, we head past Red Horse Island with its well-kept cottage and grounds into the busy waterways of the Admiralty Islands, popular with larger cruisers and day boaters alike. As we arrive, we need to top up our gas tanks, but Gananoque Municipal Marina does not have fuel docks. There was a gas dock on the main channel, but sadly for us, that's closed. No matter though, we're heading right next door to check out the unique and historic Thousand Islands Playhouse. When we return to our Thousand Islands cruise, we'll get a sneak peek inside the history of the Playhouse and continue eastward to a tiny town loaded with boating history. When we left off, we had just docked at Gananoque's Thousand Islands Playhouse. To tell us more about it, Artistic Director Ashley Corcoran joins us on the docks. Um, this started off as a canoeing club in the early 1900s here in Gananoque. Um, and then in the 70s was converted to a theater. But they kept the old canoe club feel in the lobby, and it looks a lot like you'd expect something like that to look like. Lots of wood and very cottagey. In the back, by the fireplace, photos still hang of the old club and its most famous member, Henry Harper. The room was actually named after Harper, who competed in the 1948 Olympics. While we stopped in, the cast was in final rehearsals for the classic Oscar Wilde play, the importance of being earnest. I don't know of another theater like this. You can sail up or take your powerboat up, 
Um, we have five uh, docking slips which can be reserved and in fact have to be reserved through the box office because they are popular. It's really simple, you just call the box office, say you'd like to use a slip. It's free of charge if you're coming to see a show. And if you'd like to spend the night, it's $30 including HST. If you do choose to stay, spend some time walking around the town of Gananoque. Like the Playhouse, it's full of stories. American forces raided Gananoque in the War of 1812 and cannons and plaques mark its place in history. And of course, the famous Gananoque boat line tours the island a few times a day. Motivated by our fellow boaters, we too cast off yet again, continuing eastward. Between Jack Straw Shoal, the big tour boats, and the pleasure boaters, you're going to have plenty to contend with. Again, I lean on my navigator for assistance. Meantime, my wife took a break from piloting and my mother-in-law took a break from navigation duties in order to soak up the scenery. As we follow the Alexandria Bell towards Thousand Islands Bridge, we go through a unique section of river where small and deep holes drop more than 100 feet. That causes what are essentially underwater waterfalls and currents that manifest themselves as tiny whirlpools and churning waters on the surface. It all passes under the Thousand Islands Bridge, which is actually multiple bridges spanning 14 kilometers from Ontario to New York. As we continue along the St. Lawrence, we see an imposing figure watching over all this boat traffic. Only visible from the water, this is a statue of St. Lawrence, standing peacefully atop a rocky cliff. With our most eastward destination so close, we open the throttles back up and close in on Rockport, a tiny town with the huge homes. We pulled into Ed Hook Marine for gas and another dose of history. History was it started with actually Fred Huck, late 1800s, first generation. Fred was a boat builder. Uh, went on to Ed Huck and Fred and Ed actually uh, cast Invictus engines to power these river, these wooden river skiffs that they built. They no longer build them, instead the company has evolved over 125 years into a full service marina offering everything from sails to maintenance to gas. Along the waterfront there's a handful of restaurants to choose from, all with great views of the river, some even providing dockage. Just be sure to call ahead and check as depth can vary. Heading back, we cruise through the Nittery Islands, quickly sliding in behind another big tour boat. Although this old Woody seemed to have a rougher ride of it than we did. Now that's the Thousand Islands Bridge. That's a really good reminder that we are just between Canada and the United States. We're okay here in Canadian waters, but if you accidentally drift into American waters, you could find yourself in trouble if you're not prepared. So check your charts, check your maps, do a little planning before you head out and it'll save you any headache. And it is worth all that pre-planning because the view is just stunning. 